When I first started driving truck, there were a whole lot of things I just didn't know and I had to learn the hard way. There are things now that I know that I sure wish I'd known back then when I was starting. Here are 10 things new CDL drivers should know before they start their driving career. Number one, dispatchers. There are good dispatchers and there are bad dispatchers. Good dispatchers will make you nothing but money. They'll be organized, they'll keep you moving, they'll hook you with run to run to run, so you use up your 70 hours in a timely fashion and you make good money that week. And then there are bad dispatchers. Bad dispatchers can literally ruin your week because they're disorganized or they don't like you or they just don't know what they're doing or they don't know how to work the programs for dispatch that they've got in the office. Some excuse, any excuse, it doesn't matter. It all boils down to the fact that you won't make good money if you've got a bad dispatcher. If you find yourself in that situation, and you know, you may be at a big carrier and find yourself in that position. Track your pay for a couple weeks. If it's looking pretty dismal, you gotta go upstairs and say, hey, this guy's not making me any money. I need a new dispatcher or I'm gonna have to go because I can't survive on this every week. Number two, it's not just bad dispatchers that can cost you money. It's bad equipment. And this is kind of rampant in the trucking industry and it doesn't necessarily be the tractor. It can be the trailer too. And for guys with big carriers, they're switching trailers all the time. A carrier can have a piece of junk equipment that can break down on you and you're on the side of the road for hours sometimes. Or you can run through a scale and they'll do a DOT check and find problems with the truck or the trailer. And out of that sometimes, the driver gets to pay the fine. So if you're in with a carrier that has a reputation for running junk, be aware, this is gonna cost you money. Get away from carriers that run junk equipment. Your stuff's gotta be top notch. You don't want a wheel flying off, hitting a car, and you be liable as the truck driver, and all sorts of states will make the driver liable in a situation like that, because they'll say he didn't do a proper circle check, which may not be true, but you'll still be paying the legal cost at the end of the day, and your license will be bearing that hit. Stay away from carriers with junk equipment. They can cause you nothing but grief. You think you're doing them a favor? You're not. Get out of there. Do yourself a favor. Number three. The next thing you've got to know is that the biggest danger to truck drivers are four-wheelers. And make no mistake, four-wheelers do not pay attention to what they're doing. They're terrible. It's like they're driving with blindfolds on. They're on the phone, they're texting, they're looking around. Some of them watch TV or read while they're driving. And they've got everything else on their mind but you and traffic and the laws and the regulations. Be afraid of four-wheelers because they will cut you off in a heartbeat. You've always got to be completely aware of what's around you. All sides, the back, the front, everywhere. Because you've got to know they're there. Sometimes they'll get in your blind spot. You won't even be able to see them in your mirrors, but you'll have already checked, so you'll know they're there somewhere. You can't lose track of these guys. They're like mosquitoes flipping around all over the place. You've got to keep your mind on the game. This is why being a distracted driver for a truck driver is such a dangerous thing, because there are blind spots. So you've got to keep track of everybody all the time, everywhere. Four-wheelers are your biggest danger. Keep your eyes just peeled for them and focus on where they are at all times. Number four, dispatchers, nasty dispatchers, will sometimes try to send you into really undesirable areas. And they'll put you into places or try to put you into places where you shouldn't be, or it's just not safe to go. Or they'll try to send you there for a 2 a.m. delivery when you're the only guy in the neighborhood without a gun. You've got to do your homework. This is up to you. And the dispatchers will give you lines like, oh, you know, we've never had any trouble in there. But that's, you know, it doesn't matter even that they've never had trouble in the secure yard of the customer. Three quarters of the battle is getting through the ugly ghetto neighborhood to get to the customer. That's the problem. That's, that's where the trouble starts usually, not at the customer's place. So sadly, this is up to you as a driver. You've got to do your research phone the shipper or the receiver ahead of time, say, hey, I'm supposed to come in there at 2 a.m. Is it is that gonna be safe for me? Is it all right? Can I get directions? Let me know. And, and, and talk to them, because they'll know what kind of a neighborhood it is. And use your common sense, too. Look at the map, and if it's like right in downtown Chicago or New York City, 
use your head. You don't want to be going in there at night. You want to wait for the sun to come up so you can see where you're going. So you can see all the locals and see whether they're going to chase after you and try to get in the trailer doors as you're cruising down the street. This dangerous deliveries thing is a huge problem, but no one can patrol it but you. So be careful where you go. It may, it may save your life. Number five, do not sign on and agree to lease a truck from a carrier. That's one of the carrier's favorite tricks and it makes you completely financially responsible for the truck and all its expenses over paying your rent or your mortgage or feeding your kids or anything else. You do not want to get into a situation like that. You at least need to learn your way around the business before you even think about getting a truck of your own. And if you ever do decide to be an owner operator, leasing it from the carrier is not the way to go. All that does is make the carrier rich and you poor. So you're better off to, to finance it some other way, but do not, do not lease a truck from a carrier. It's a scam. Number six, something else you don't want to do is be a lease operator or an owner operator in a great big fleet when they've got company trucks because freight gets slow sometimes. There are ebbs and flows. It'll get busy and it'll get slow. And when it gets slow, the carriers will always feed their company trucks because the carriers have to pay for those company trucks. And the lease operators and the owner operators, their miles will drop because the carrier is busy taking care of his own trucks. His trucks are his number one priority, paying his bills, not paying your bills. So you don't want to get into a situation like that. If you're going to be an owner operator, do it with a carrier, a small carrier that doesn't have company trucks that you're competing with all the time. That's just a smart business move. Number seven, it's just like dispatchers. There are good ones and bad ones, only mechanics as well. There are good ones and bad ones. And some of them are amazing. And a lot of them are hacks. So you've got you've to pay attention to where you go for service or to have a wheel fixed or something like that. You can't just get some backyard guy doing work on your truck, especially the tires and rims and stuff. You lose a wheel on the highway and it rolls off and kills somebody, it's a serious, serious problem for you. You've got to have your equipment in top-notch shape. And when you have it worked on, you've got to have it worked on by a top-notch shop, not just some fly-by-night guy with a service truck. Number eight, the trucking will take a toll on your health. And the problem is that when you get to these truck stops at night, there's almost nothing anymore but fast food. It's all fast food these days, and none of it's good for you. And then you've had a long day, you've put in 14 hours or, or more a lot of the time, and you're tired. So you don't get a whole lot of exercise. You're sitting down, and you don't get a chance to go, go out and work out. So, it's a sedentary lifestyle and you've got to fight against that and you've got to actively fight that right from the time you start. Now it's going to be tough, but what I used to do for instance was park at the very far end of the parking lot and do a few laps in the parking lot before I went into the truck stop. And I do that a couple times a night just to stretch out, just to get for a bit of a walk. And you can see it still didn't do me as much good as I was hoping it was going to do. But you've, you've got to actively work to fight off this, this fat food problem because it's, it's, it's huge in this industry. All sorts of truck drivers are dying of heart attacks and high blood pressure and diabetes and things like this way before their time. So be aware that this is a huge problem in this industry. You've got to watch your health. Number nine, no, number nine. Carriers love to muddy up the waters when they're doing your pay statements. And most of these pay statements, when you look at, you'd need a Philadelphia accountant to translate them. There's, there's no need for that, but they do it deliberately to confuse the drivers as to how much money they've really made and how many miles they've run and stuff like that. So you've got to watch your pay statements and what you're really looking for are the miles, the mileage rate, how much they paid you for your stops. You should be able to keep track of that in a little book that you keep with you all the time and match that up to your pay statement when it's pay time because carriers will deliberately and knowingly lowball you on your pay. It's up to you to watch your pay statements and I've known guys that have lost thousands and thousands of dollars to unscrupulous carriers that just don't, they just don't care. They figure they'll make a little money off everybody watch your pay statements. Go in and fight inaccurate pay statements. And if this continues to be a problem, your pay statements are always wrong and they'll never be too high. They're always too low. It's funny they don't make that mistake. 
you're going to need to change carriers. And I've, I've had to do that in the past too. You just can't let them steal money from you, but all sorts of them will certainly try. Number 10, if you guys are in over the road trucking careers, you've got to realize that very few carriers have a pension plan anymore. And they'll have a 401k, some of them, but that'll flux up and down as the markets move. But it's not a true pension plan. It's a cheap excuse for a pension plan. Why am I telling you this? Because you've got to be able to make enough money so you can bank money every paycheck because that's got to go towards your retirement. You've got to build your own retirement fund and no one else is going to help you with this unless you hire an accountant or a bookkeeper to help you do this for you or with you. But by God, trust me, it's a worthwhile exercise. There's no way that you should be living paycheck to paycheck. You've got to be able to put a little money in the bank for your pension because no one else is going to pay you diddly squat when it comes time to retire and that's that's what separates the good carriers from the bad carriers as well and uh, a lot of um, uh, privately owned fleets for instance offer a pension plan and those are the guys you want to go with anyway because believe me when you get old like me you will sure wish you had a pension so the purpose of today's video was to better help inform new drivers so they don't have to go through some of the things and make some of the mistakes and and know not not know some of the things that I didn't know and suffer for it. I want you guys to go into this with your eyes wide open, know what's coming at you, and hopefully that'll prevent making any errors and mistakes and you'll have a good trucking career. And that's what we all want for you. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down. I'm pulling for you and we'll look for you in the back hall. Take care.